Hey everyone, this lesson we'll be looking at a first-hand investigation for preparing and diluting solutions to known concentrations. So the aim of today is to prepare a, a 0.1 molar solution of copper to sulfate and then systematically dilute it uh, tenfold to 0.01 and then 0.001. So what we do is we need to first clean the volumetric flask. The volumetric flask is really important because it gives us an accurate volume of uh, the water that we're going to put in and therefore we can calculate a very specific concentration. So first we need to clean it and then calculate the mass of copper sulfate that we're going to add to it. Uh, so what's important is that the copper sulfate, uh, for each copper sulfate molecule it brings along five uh, water molecules so we need to take into account the water molecules that are bound to it in the weight. Uh, so when we prepare this, we need to figure out how much is the mass we need to weigh out to make a 0.1 molar solution in a 250 ml flask. And then we'll go through that calculation a bit later. The next we need to weigh out uh, the crystals in a small beaker and then dissolve them in a little water and then quantitatively transfer it to the volumetric flask. So what's really important is that we uh, first dissolve a little bit, pour it in and then rinse it out to make sure we get all the copper sulfate out of the beaker. So we add water to the mark on the, uh, on the volumetric flask here and put the stopper in so then we can mix it and make sure it's a homogeneous uh, solution so things are not clumping at the bottom or anything like that. Then we label the flask and this is the, the first uh, concentration. So next we need to make dilutions of it and what we do is get another 100 ml volumetric flask and make sure it's clean then we clean a 10 ml pipette and, or with water and then we equally braid it with the, the solution we made before, the 0.1 molar solution. And what we, why we do this is so that when we have the clean pipette, we get the accurate concentration in there. Any water droplets that are in there can alter the concentration which we will put in the next flask. So we need to make sure it's completely the same concentration as what we want it to be. So we pipette the 10 ml of the first uh, solution the 0.1 molar one, and add it to the volumetric flask, the 100 ml volumetric flask that we just cleaned. And then add water to the, to the mark, and then put the stopper in and shake it to make sure it's mixed up properly. We then label it with the 0.01 molar copper sulfate solution. We then repeat this again, because we're making another one in 10 dilution. So make sure we get the clean pipette, transfer the 10 ml into another 100 ml flask, and then we'll make it into a new dilution. So what we had to do was calculate the amount of, so, uh, sorry, of copper sulfate we wanted to put in there. So what we had is copper sulfate, the mass of copper sulfate with five, um, five sets of water on there. And when we add all that together, we get 249.7 grams for every mole. So that's our molar mass. This is our molar mass. Okay. Next we need to, we know our concentration is we want 0.1 moles per litre. We then know that the volume of our volumetric flask was 250 mils, but we need to make sure we convert it to litres, so 0.25. And so the equation is N equals C times V. So we substitute the concentration 0.1 in there with the 0.25 um, litres of the water we have in the volumetric flask, and it gives us the molarity, uh, the number of moles of copper sulfate with the water that we need to put in. And we need 0.025 moles of it. So we then use the other equation to find the, the mass. And we know that we have N is 0.025, our moles, times the molar mass, which is up here, 249.7. And it gives us 6.425 uh, grams. And that's the amount of copper sulfate that we need to weigh out and put in the first volumetric flask. So then for the systematic dilutions, we know we have the first, uh, first concentration in the first flask, and we know the concentration we want in the second flask. So we know concentration one, concentration two. We also know uh, the volume of the first one, 250 mils. So then we can calculate the volume of the next one. Uh, so we know that we had a 0.1 molar solution, and we take out 10 mils, and that's, we change this into liters. We don't know the concentration of the second one, 
but we know we have 100 mils of it. So therefore, the next one is 0.01 molar solution, which is what we wanted to have anyway. So we repeat this again to get the third flask, and we get the first concentration, which is the one we take from here. We took out 10 mils of it and put it into the next flask. So the next flask, we don't know the concentration, well, we, we do, but we're calculating it. And so we know that the next flask has 100 mils in it. So the concentration is unknown. We all got all the other ones, so we can substitute everything in and calculate it, and it gives us 0.001 moles per liter. So that's the concentration of the third flask. So we just did a 1 in 10 dilution from here to here. So the accuracy can be improved, obviously, with an electronic balance, and that will give us a more accurate amount of the weight of what we measured, rather than a beam balance, which I don't think anyone really uses anymore because it's very, very inaccurate. And we need to also make sure when we transfer solutions across that we do it quantitatively from the, uh, from the beaker to the volumetric flask or from volumetric flask to volumetric flask. And we need to, we can improve the experiment by not losing any drops of liquid. Any drops of liquid means we change the concentration and we've lost something. So it's not, it's going to be always less than what we had initially or what we wanted. So we need to make sure we have the beaker rinsed and the flasks and pipettes rinsed. Uh, we can also avoid parallax error. So that's when we're looking uh, to measure the volumes and we have to make sure we look at the bottom of the meniscus. Uh, and also the bottom of the meniscus needs to be on top or in line with the engraved mark on the volumetric flask. If it's below, then we know that the, constant, the, the volume was not reached. And then when we use a pipette and a volumetric flask, we need to make sure the base of the meniscus is at the engraving line. Remember that that's the parallax error. So make sure we always look straight across, so the eye looks straight across, and the meniscus is on the line, the bottom of the meniscus. So we can look at molarity and looking at the concentration, we can then decide how we're going to dilute it. And when we know what, what we're doing, we can then calculate the dilution, what we need to take out, the volumes we need to take out, to make up the concentrations that we want. And usually what we do is make a stock solution of a strong concentration and then serially dilute it to one in 10 or one in five or whatever you need to then get your dilutions that you want. And then we always use the calculations, uh, the, the equations we learned before to calculate the concentrations in the, in the volumetric flasks. So using that information that we just looked at and how we did it, we can then answer some questions that are based on practicals. So question 10, what mass of silver chloride will be precipitated if excess um, sodium nitrate solution is added to 50 ml of 0.4 molar barium chloride solution? So the important information here is the 50 ml and the 0.4 molar solution. And the equation that we have for the chemical reaction is that barium chloride and silver nitrate react together to form um, a precipitate of silver chloride. Remember we were looking at precipitates before and it forms a precipitate and um, barium nitrate which is spectator ions. Remember they don't partake in the, chem uh, the chemical equation, uh, chemical reaction. So the stoichiometry or the ratios of everything is that we need one set of one mole of barium chloride and we need two moles of uh, silver nitrate to then form two moles of the silver chloride and one molar barium nitrate. So remember that we need two moles here and we have to take this into account in our calculations. So the number of moles of barium chloride is C times V and that's 0.4 which we had up here times the volume in mils so we changed it to litres 0.05 and we get 0.02 moles of barium chloride. Then we calculate the number of moles of sodium uh, silver chloride so silver chloride, we use the same formula, C times V, but remember we had we need two moles of it because we had two moles here, it gives us two moles here. So we need to make sure we times it by two to the barium chloride because it's two times the barium chloride number of moles. So two times that gives us 0 0.04. So next, uh, we can then calculate the mass of the uh, silver chloride and N equals M over molar mass. So once we substitute, we know that the molar mass of so, uh, silver chloride is 143.4, we add it together. 
and we know the moles is up here. So we substitute everything in and we can then find the mass. And the mass is that times that and we get 5.74 grams. So next, question 11, calculate the volume of ammonium phosphate solution when 10 mils of it of the 1.2 molar solution was diluted to obtain 0.005 molar solution of ammonium phosphate. So here we have concentrations, so 1.2 moles per litre, 0.005, and then we also are given a value for the volume, which is 10 mils. So here we have two sets of, uh, two sets of concentrations, so we can use C1V1 is equal to C2V2. So C1V1 is 1.2 moles of the first solution, with 10 mils. And the second uh, concentration was 0 0.05, 0 0.05 moles per litre, and we don't know the volume. Uh, if we leave this in mils, and this in mils, then we can leave it. If we change this to litres, we need to make sure we change it to litres here too. So once we calculate, move this over to the other side by dividing both sides point, by 0 0.05, we get 240 mils. And we're going to leave it in mils because everything was given in mils. Next, question 12. Calculate the required mass of uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate to prepare 250 mils of a 0.05 molar solution. So first we, we can calculate the number of moles that it's given and we were given 250 mils of a 0.05 molar solution. So n, the number of moles n is equal to the, uh, the concentration times the volume, and the volume here, we need to change it to litres because it's litres up here. So moles per litre um, and litres here, so 0.25. This gives us 0 0.015125 moles. And remember, mass is equal to molar mass times the number of moles. And that's this one here, 1, 0.0125 moles times 84, which is the molar mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate. And that gives us point, uh, 1.05 grams. 13. The concentration of a stock solution of potassium hydroxide is 3 moles per litre. Calculate the concentration of the solution when 1.5 mils of this was diluted to 25 mils. So here we are given point, uh, 3 moles per litre. A concentration, we're given 1.5 mils of it was taken out and then diluted to 25 mils. So we're given two volumes and a concentration, so that automatically tells us to use the C1V1 times is equal to C2V2. So the first one is, first concentration is three moles per litre, and we took 1.5 mils of it, so we can times them together in the one section. Next, we don't know the concentration of the second one, but we know it's diluted to 25 mils. So we put the 25 in. So C2, or the concentration of the second one, is equal to 0.18 moles per litre. So question 14. The reaction between barium chloride and potassium sulphate produces a solid barium sulphate, according to the equation here. So what we need to do is calculate the number of moles of barium chloride in 30 mils of this 0.4, uh, 0.4 molar solution. So we're told 30 mils in 0.4 moles of solution. So moles is equal to C times V. So uh, C here, and the volume is in 30 mils. So we ne need to make sure we change it back into litres because it's litres here to keep it consistent. And we get 0.012 moles. Next, calculate the number of moles of barium sulphate precipitate that would be produced. So precipitate is denoted by the S on the other side, it's no longer an aqueous solution. And because all of it is, this one is equal to the same as this one, we can use the same number of moles. There was no change in the number of moles of that. So it's 0.12 moles. C, calculate the mass of barium sulfate precipitate produced. So the mass is 233.37 times the number of moles, and that gives us 2.8 grams. Calcul calculate the volume of 0.5 moles per litre of um, 
the potassium sulfate solution that would be needed to react with the barium chloride. So remember here we've got two. So we, we know that before we had 0.012 moles of barium, barium sulfate and it's in a, a 0.5 molar solution. So we can put those in and we get 0.024 litres as the volume. So what we did here, and that gives us 24 mils because we have to change litres back into mils. So what we're doing here is looking to apply what we know about concentrations and molarity and then how we can use this to calculate moles or mass and, all, and uh, the molar mass to figure out how much we need for the chemical equations. So remember everything here that we learn is interchangeable. So everything that we've learnt before regarding calculations with mass, molar mass, number of moles, we can apply now to concentrations. And remember when we were doing first-hand investigations with the making up concentrated solutions or diluting the solutions, we need to make sure we're accurate with the meniscus and avoiding parallax error. Thank you.